Welcome to the Mr. Durant Show. T H E E double E. I spelled it right. Simon, que si, mi gente? Orale. Allow me to introduce to you my lovely co host for today. Give a big San Gabriel welcome to Joanna Salas. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Yeah. Who do we have in the house? Tony Valdez. <laughs> Give it up. We have Tony Valdez from KTTV Channel 11. Come on, give Tony a big hand. <laughs> we have one of the baddest bands all over the world. That's right, Mija. I think so. This band put all Latinos in the map. Thank you very much. <laughs> we have Tierra in the house. <laughs> Well, you're never too early, you're never too late. Welcome to Cafe East LA. Everybody goes there. You see someone, you know them. And it's a crazy scene now. You can't resist the beat now. Welcome on in and stay. I said, welcome to Cafe East LA. Come on, y'all. Baby, baby, looks like it's going hell. My, my, baby, baby, looks like it's going to hell. Well, you better sit my side. I'm going to teach you how to drive and wear. Well, you got to jump, jive, then you where you got to jump, jive, then you where you got to jump. I said, now, my darling. excited but you know what mi gente we have another treat for you we have tony valdez from fox 11 news give a big big hand thank you for, thank you for coming again tony. Sure, my pleasure my we got to press the flesh there oh yeah yeah I don't <laughs> I know exactly how old I am, but I feel about 40 years younger when I see Rudy over here. Because I, re I remember him when he was just that big, uh -huh. just about. And to look at him now, this seasoned professional, uh, this dynamic man with such great musicianship. Uh -huh. And yeah, he has a little bit of gray, but you know, Canoso is okay. Canoso, it's okay. That's it's what okay. my wife tells me all the time. <laughs> We're going to bring the Salas brothers up right now, right now. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Rudy and Steve Salas! As I was listening to the band, uh, I was thinking about all the places that I had seen these two guys. Uh, the Little Union on Goodrich, the Big Union, Union in uh -huh. Vernon. Um, where else? The Rhythm Room, probably, in Fullerton. Yeah, yeah. All kinds of places. The Puente Handball Club. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still there, too. But, but the Kennedy most, Hall. Kennedy, Kennedy Hall, Hall yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the most amazing thing was seeing them at the Paramount Ballroom. And oh. Huggy Boy used to be involved, and he'd announce some of these things. Uh -huh. Brooklyn and Mott, Brooklyn and Mott, uh -huh. in the heart of East LA. Of course, it's Chavez now. Yeah. I think one of the things is that we need to talk about is how different it was to go to a dance back then. You paid what, maybe a dollar? About a dollar, if that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and everybody got along, yeah. and, and you had guys just wore great ties shows. And the guys had to wear ties. <laughs> guys wore ties. Yeah. yeah, it was great. It was just a whole different thing, you know, because music was, there was so much emphasis put on the live music uh -huh. and mm -hmm. the bands and stuff like that. It was great. It was the golden era as far as I'm concerned. Of the so the Salas Brothers, then that was even before the Jaguars, before you guys were the Jaguars and uh, you were it was, you Well, it was the Jaguars with the Salas Brothers. Right. And me and my brother yeah. used to wear uh -huh. the singers. And the Jaguars used to take care of us. 
that friend. Right. Remember my brother used to... in the mic there. Yeah, well, the Jaguars were like our older brothers. Well, they were not uh -huh. really our brothers, but they used to take care of us. They were uh, like two or three years older. They were already 16, was maybe. Or Mario like Pañawa? Mario Pañawa, Adrian Sansoni, <laughs> Frank Travis. Um, I can't remember the other ones. But, ee, they're going to hate, hate me if I don't remember. But, um, oh, Anthony Beaver, Anthony, Carol. Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're still, and, and they're all still playing, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we were, uh, we were real young kids. We used to come home. We do those all-night parties sometimes sure. at the Pickwick when they have the uh, grad night. Uh -huh. And, you know, we're like 11 and 13, and we'd come home at 4 or 5 in the morning, you know. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got used to My it. My brother used to have a, a, a this stool that he used to carry around. <laughs> to make, we had one mic, and then he used to put it right there and yeah. stand on it. Too, yeah. so I used to have to stand on a stool <laughs> so I can reach the mic. But see, I used to roadie for myself. I used to carry my own stool. <laughs> oh, my own roadie. <laughs> Until I pushed him off it. You know, one of the things that I can remember, I, I don't know which venue it was, but you were sort of off stage, you were getting ready, and you were singing in Spanish. You were singing like Sabor a Mi or Gemma or Gemma, one of those songs. Yeah, yeah, all these boleros and stuff. And, you know, we, we, Los Lobos, they uh -huh. deserve a lot of credit for holding on to the heritage. Uh -huh. But you guys were holding on to it. You were involved in it way from well, the beginning. That's how we started singing. Wow. And only all, in Spanish. We didn't sing anything in English. And, and although that was before we even spoke any Spanish, you know, it was really weird because every <laughs> every song we sang was Spanish boleros, rancheras, and the whole thing, you uh -huh. know. It was As great a matter of time. fact, there was a little story that Rudy shared with me that uh, he had some famous roadies. Some famous roadies? By Los Lobos? Well, no, they used to play. They were not, well, oh, I see what you're saying. I know where you're going with this one. Well, no, no, no. They, the Beatles uh, used to root here. <laughs> the Beatles used to have our Ringo was my, uh, no. Gringo, what? we called it. Gringo. <laughs> Gringo. Well, what? No, well, uh, Conrad Lozano, who's the bass player for Los Lobos, was, was oh. our bass player. Oh, okay. So uh, Cesar Rosa, uh, Rosas and, uh, and the other guys used to, Louie and all them used to, to get in the gig, they would roadie for us. Yes, so that was <laughs> and they so brought the wine. <laughs> and they brought the wine, too. <laughs> and they didn't spill it either. Huh? <laughs> and other stuff. <laughs> Save the wine, you know. You know, I, I wondered, those, we'll those, those years that you spent so young working the menudo circuit here in <laughs> Los Angeles, yeah. you must have learned a lot of things that, that made your days as, as Tierra and, and even today um, made them better, made you better musicians and better performers. Well, I think all the influences, you know, like I remember uh, when Ed Chicano was, uh, um, um, when they had their hit, uh, Via Tirado, and they went out on the road, uh -huh. and um, they were a great band before, but when they went on the road, like a year later, some they came back, and they were road tested, and they were opening up for a lot of these really major, major acts all over the country and all over the world. So when they came back to the to their neighborhood, they were so, so, so much better. You know, they were road tested. Wow. They were just, you come back and you got all the influences that you go in, and by the time you come back home after something like that, you better learn if you're going to compete, you know. And that's what happened to us. Yeah, and I would imagine that if, if, if you're standing in front of an audience performing live when you're 14 years old, mm -hmm. when you're 24 or 34, you've oh. got a lot of experience there. It's, yeah, you're, uh, you know, you got so much experience and then you lose a lot of that because, you know, I, I've never really lost that, that kind of those butterflies type of mm -hmm. situation, you know, but you handle it a lot better now, you know, <laughs> you know that feels good, good. Do, it, do, it, do, it, do it again. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, 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 learn, you learn how to deal with it better and, uh, you know, this is the only guy that keeps me, used to keep me uh, stressed, you know. <laughs> But I'm okay now. <laughs> You're okay now. <laughs> I got over it. Let me take your let me take your pulse. <laughs> You're okay. One thing I want to say um, for a few our, um, viewers, Tony has been always, always, always behind this. He's been one of the biggest supporters of the Chicano music wow, from way back. Give yeah. this guy. Yeah. You know, Give him his props, you know. He never gave it up, you know. When he did that thing when uh, when Romeo before when Romeo passed away, and he had that fundraiser. You had Willie G on there, and I and I was very, I mean, I admired that. That you know, you always stuck to your roots, and I, I mean, between you and I, and between all of us, you know, give it up, give it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He was also the MC for the uh, the rock and roll shows at uh, Salesian High School. He was doing the MC for that. Yeah. That was, wow. yeah. So uh, this is this man's part of our history. You there know? you go, Tony. A big I part of our history. And, never, and he's always back. He's back right now. <laughs>